Welcome to Tech and Effects Instructional Design Project. My name is Cindy Robinson, and I will be giving you a brief overview of the analysis stage of our project. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce the rest of our team. Amelia is a fourth grade language arts and social studies teacher in Wadsworth. Janelle is a program coordinator of faculty development at NeoMed. Vince is a teacher in the Elyria school system. Jen is a Spanish teacher in Garfield Heights. And my name is Cindy Robinson, and I work at the University of Akron for the Dean of Students. Now that you've met the team, let's talk a little bit about our learning situation. Our instructional design project focused on the design and development services area of, at the University of Akron. This department is also referred to as the DDS department throughout our presentation. Mr. Steve Kaufman is a senior instructional designer and served as our subject matter expert. The DDS department employs nine staff and four of these staff are instructional designers. The DDS team works directly with faculty interested in transitioning a traditional face-to-face -face course into an online or hybrid teaching environment. In addition, the department conducts training and support for Springboard and various other instructional and multimedia platforms. As you can see from the screen, we're showing you a diagram of the ADDI model. Team Tech and Effect use this model to investigate and design our learning module. Each team member will be guiding you through each of the ADDI stages as we progress. Our learning problem focused on faculty who may be interested in transitioning their face-to-face -face course into an online format. There is some concern that faculty at UA may lack information about the services and support the DDS department can provide, as well as the knowledge and experience on how to develop an online course. More importantly, not all faculty have the background and expertise to effectively transfer a current lecture style course into an online or hybrid course format. The online environment can be overwhelming and time consuming for these faculty to learn and develop all the necessary skills needed. The learning goal that we outlined with our SME is to develop a single learning module for faculty interested in developing an online course. In addition, the DDS department would like a one-page companion piece that can be easily sent to faculty who are interested in learning more about the DDS services and who want to begin the planning process. Our audience, or group of learners, encompass the faculty full-time and instructors who may be part-time at the University of Akron. Currently, 781 full-time faculty are employed at the university's main campus. These faculty work in eight academic colleges. They teach over 300 undergraduate and graduate programs to a campus of an, of an enrollment of over 27,000 students. 82% of our full-time faculty have a terminal degree. It's important to note that our base of learners are exclusively University of Akron faculty and instructors. The learning theory that we use to design our module is adult learning theory. And Janelle will discuss this in more detail in the design phase. Our task analysis began by identifying key stakeholders and evaluating and discussing the best way to collect our data. The team felt that the problem involved two different populations. The first population are the faculty instructors on the UA main campus who would use the services of the DDS department. The second population are the four instructional designers who work in the DDS department. This group is also important because they're gonna be working with the faculty throughout the process. So this module is geared towards both of these populations. Due to the size and complexity of the faculty and the timeframe of the project, our team decided that the best way to collect information on the faculty was to conduct interviews with our SME, 
who would be representing the feelings and experience of experiences of the other instructional designers, as well as some of the faculty that they have already worked with. The second sample is a small group of faculty that we selected to have completed or participated in the workshops or services that the DDS department offers and are now teaching an online course. We felt this group could be a second subset that would validate and be able to share their experiences and, and better understand how they learn to teach online because they utilize the services of the DDS department. We considered the interviews to be our data and they can be categorized as a qualitative research approach. In most cases, a qualitative approach to collecting data focuses on the understanding of a social human problem. In this type of data collection, the researcher becomes the tool or the mechanism for which the data is collected. In order to meet with our selected sample, we've the team formulated an interview protocol and then selected our sample faculty. Focusing on our data collection, you'll be, you'll be able to see two sets of interview questions. One is the one that we're looking at right now, and these are the questions that we worked with with our SME. For the purposes of our presentation, I'll only be focusing on a, key, on a few key results from our discussions with our SME. However, on the screen, you can get a good idea of all of the questions that we discuss with the SME in order to collect some data. One of the key areas that the team was interested in learning more about was how do faculty learn about the DDS department and the services that they offer. Our SME explained that faculty have three ways to learn how to develop an online course and work with the DDS. One option is to to participate in a two-week online self-paced course that culminates with the Quality Matters designation. We've seen this designation on Dr. Ward's classes as she has participated in this form of training. The, section, the second option is a 40-hour in-person workshop that lasts for the semester. And the third option is a one-on-one -on -one consultation with one of the designers. While the one-on-one -on -one consultations are the most time-consuming, it is the preferred method of faculty based on, our S based on the feedback of our SME. All in all, 150 faculty have completed one of these three processes. The SME also pointed out in our interview that faculty will sometimes complete both the Quality Matters online module and then participate in the semester-long in-person course. The SME felt that these faculty are the most prepared and enthusiastic in focusing on the transition of their class. When asked what data exists regarding the faculty awareness of available sources, meaning has the DDS done any type of data collection um, for their benefit, and our SME shared that a formal survey has not been distributed by the department. However, through their conversations with faculty and departments, they have gathered a number of key points that they feel impact a faculty member's decision to want to teach online. And these points include a misconception of what a good online course means, concerns about the ownership of content and academic freedom, especially if they leave campus, meaning the faculty, a lack of consensus on the direction of online learning on the campus, and faculty support and incentives for teaching online and spending the time to develop and prepare online classes. The second group of data that we worked with, we call it our summary of interview questions by our faculty alumni. And these are faculty that have worked with the DDS department participated in one of the three avenues that the office 
offers and are now teaching online. These faculty took time to share their stories and we want to share some of their feedback with you. For the purpose of our presentation, I'll just dis be discussing these first two questions and giving you some of it, some examples of what two of the faculty highlighted um, through our interviews with them. All in all, we targeted six faculty um, alumni, as we have been calling them, um, and four agreed to work with us throughout this process. And to, to our knowledge, all of these faculty are tenure track, experienced faculty and multiple departments in colleges across campus and who have mainly taught in a lecture format for the majority of their career. The first question, what prompted you to develop an online course or to learn new instructional technologies for your course, was shared and, and asked of our, our group of faculty. In most cases, the faculty were very direct with their responses. And in a couple cases, the faculty were very lengthy um, in their response. Two of the responses that I'm going to share with you, our first faculty member teaches um, in the College of Arts and Sciences. And what prompted him to develop the course was an unmet student need combined with the fact that the powerful instructional technologies available to faculty today and the incredible support of the DDS department will improve not only teaching and learning in face-to-face, -face, but also the hybrid and online environments. And this is what prompted me to take the plunge. A second faculty member who teaches in our College of Business in the manage management department shared an experience that he had with a parent who called in distress. Their daughter had been in a car accident and she was in her last semester at the University of Akron. Once the student had recuperated and returned home, this particular faculty member started taping his lectures in his traditional face-to-face -face format, but taping them, sending them to her, as well as coming up with alternative ways for her to complete projects and tests. This was the faculty member's first plunge, so to say, um, into online hybrid models, and this was 10 years ago. And this particular student did graduate within that semester on time. These two faculty members also discussed in their interview administrative and environmental factors that impact faculty's ability to devote time and resources to the development of online courses. Many of these factors are the same factors that our SME highlighted, so we felt that that there was validation. The second question was talking about the hurdles that faculty had to overcome. Our first faculty member said the biggest hurdle is finding the time and motivation to do it right. Anyone can throw their lecture notes on Springboard and claim they have developed an online course, but that's simply not true. Our second faculty member commented, anyone who enters this game simply has to realize that a computer software and hardware will continue to change at a rapid pace. We can all get discouraged that something we spent so much time and effort developing will almost be sure to become obsolete within a few months, but that's just how things are. We teach our students to learn how to adapt and change, and we need to model that behavior ourselves. Another key important fact from a faculty member. And I think we can all relate to the time and the resources and the motivation um, in these online classes. Coincidentally, as we were embarking on the task analysis, our SME shared a research project that was taking place on campus. You can see some of the data on the screen. This project has not been formally finalized, but the project was, it was a faculty project gauging faculty members pre perceptions of why or why not they're teaching online. And you can see 59% of those respondents are apprehensive. The team realizes the breadth and depth and complexity of the university environment. It's important to understand the role of academic freedom on a college campus. 
Online teaching and learning has come along.